Melbourne. Treasurer, thanks for your time this morning. Five million people. Good to be with you, Paul. Seven hundred and fifty dollars each. Where do you hope that money is spent? Across the economy, obviously, it's up to those who receive the money as to how they spend it. And what we do know from previous experiences, some of that money goes to discretionary items like food and grocery bills, rent, uh, and other household items. And at the same time, some uh, save that money and, and, and pay down their debts. So five million Australians will get a $750 cash payment at around a cost of $4 billion. Uh, to, to the Commonwealth Government. It's mm. the second such cash payment uh, that we have made. The earlier one was from March and uh, people will get the money starting this week. Uh, will there be a third or is this it for the, this type of stimulus? We've got plans for these two. Uh, we haven't got plans uh, for a third at this okay. stage. Uh, what we do know is that this cash payment is part of a comprehensive suite yep. of measures that we've announced, some $260 billion of payments and support, uh, either through uh, the Reserve Bank or to, directly to, to businesses or to households uh, to help meet some of the incurred costs as a result of COVID-19. A couple of questions on JobKeeper, and we await your announcements on July 23. Mm. But before that happens, uh, had businesses that reported a slump in April and therefore uh, became entitled for JobKeeper, have they been retested? Uh, some in they, shopping centres, they, they haven't. So some in shopping centres, perhaps, may have even recovered by now, but are still getting JobKeeper. Have you checked that? Yeah, I mean that has been one of the features of the program is you hadn't required a retesting over the course of, of these six months. So yeah. you're right, some businesses uh, may have recovered, uh, but obviously uh, um, there's been a, a hit overall to the economy, and, and a number of businesses have continued to do it tough. And as we mm. uh, consider the next phase of support, uh, and we've already announced that we will be doing another phase of income support, uh, and announcing that on the 23rd, that that's one of the considerations will take into you, account. So you're going to tighten it before the end of September, do you think? Uh, before the end of September, you'll unlikely see any changes. What okay. we're focused on is obviously uh, from that period onwards. On the other uh, end of the spectrum, uh, how many businesses, uh, it must be hard to tell, but I'm sure you're looking at it, how many businesses are in danger of complete collapse beyond th that support that you're talking about? Well, that's obviously difficult to tell now because we've got one country and two stages. I mean, what we're seeing in New South Wales, Queensland and other states is the opening up of the economy mm -hmm. after that initial spike in March. And what we're seeing in Victoria has been the closing down of the economy with a six-week lockdown as, as a reflection of, of the spike of cases that we've had uh, here in Victoria. So we'll continue uh, to, to, to watch the situation closely, respond with the, with the cash payments that are currently going out to business, yeah. businesses and households, well, just, uh, but there will be some businesses that don't survive on the other side. Just quickly on that on Victoria, um, what have you noticed since the lockdown uh, that businesses might need some extra help uh, immediately? Well, what we've said, Paul, is that we won't go for a state-specific uh, package of, of measures. What we'll focus on is Australia national, uh, nationwide uh, support measures, and obviously they can be targeted to those businesses and households who need that support yeah. most. And okay. that has been the approach that we've used going into this crisis and that will be the approach that will continue through this crisis. More generally, uh, note that um, uh, more than 100 people were fined for breaches of restrictions in Victoria. Uh, you're in Victoria. Are people taking this second lockdown seriously enough from what you've seen? Yes, they are. And, you know, the Premier provided guidance. He, he said, wear a mask if you can't effectively socially distance. And I was, and if you're in a car, for example, that was one time to wear it. And I wore, I wore a mask in, in, in the car the other day. Uh, but when I was walking with my family on the street uh, and, and able to, to effectively social distance, I didn't need a mask. And when I was on the streets yesterday, I, I did see some people with masks and others yeah. with, uh, without them. But hopefully, everyone's following uh, the, the requirements that we now uh, have in place because it's a deadly serious game. What message do you think the Prime Minister was giving Australians by being at the football on the weekend? 
Well, again, that reflected the fact that uh, New South Wales and Victoria are at different stages. Uh, and, you know, good on him for being passionate about his country and about his footy. I'd love to go to watch the Storm or the Carlton Football Club, but I just have to travel into state, Paul, as you know, to, to go and see them. The, re the reality is in New South Wales you can, or Queensland, you can go and, yeah. and watch the, the footy. And, and I think it just reflects the reality that we're in. Uh, and I note that the even the opposition uh, leader didn't criticise the Prime Minister for doing that, and I bet you he would have if he thought there was an, a, a, a political opportunity well, in it, and I think that reflects where the public is at. Actually, yeah, I just wanted to ask you on that. The, uh, the partisanship, I think, has diminished federally. I mentioned that on the program last week, and uh, uh, it, at times impressively so. Uh, perhaps not so with the opposition in the Liberal Party in Victoria, which continues to uh, attack Dan Andrews. Are you comfortable with the role the opposition is playing in Victoria? Well, firstly, I challenge the premise of your, your question there. I think the federal opposition has been, you know, uh, barking criticisms every, every single day uh, and been hyper-partisan mm. at many times through this crisis. As you know, the Prime Minister and I and the Health Minister uh, have worked um, constructively with the Victorian Government and, and supported I know, them that, through that, this that, very that difficult was, time. That was my point. I was just asking you about the Victorian uh, Liberal Party, that's all. They were calling him dictator for well, a long time and challenging the reopening of... Uh, uh, his, his measures to uh, to keep the economy as it was, and then they're pushing him well, to reopen. Well, look, um, they can point out legitimately mistakes. Yep. Uh, that's you know absolutely fair to do so, and it's important that we don't repeat mistakes, uh, especially those that we've seen in Victoria. But what yep. we're focused on as a federal government is going forward, uh, doing it positively, doing yep. it constructively, taking the country with us, and I think that's what we've done to date, and that's what we'll do going forward. Well, leadership uh, continues to be a big discussion around the country. Thanks for your views on it this morning. And uh, good luck with the $750. Josh Frydenberg. Thanks, Paul.